97.9 The Box, live from our local uh, Houston BMW Center Studios. It's the Mad Hat uh, morning, morning Show. James the Beast Wilson is in the studio yeah, with yeah, us. Good yeah, morning. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to the show. Yeah. Jazz yeah. already hit her thirst button. It's on and popping in here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave you alone. On the coup, James, your story, is bas- it could basically be a movie, bro. Yeah. You're from L.A., on the streets, you know, juvenile delinquency, um, bad things happen to you, foster care, uh, everything could go wrong in your life. Right. Somehow, some way though, you, some inspiration, which we're gonna ask you about, turns it all around. You turn into this phenom with athletics and school, go to college, then you make the decision where you're gonna play some football, mm-hmm. you go to Poland, to right, play some yeah, ball, yeah. bring it back to the States, play with the Bears. Mm-hmm. Then somewhere in there, he's like, you know, I don't want to do this no more. Let's do some MMA fighting. I don't know how that transition right. happens. <laughs> then you, you kick box. You do all this stuff. Right. And I'm like, now we heavyweight boxer too. Yes. Yep. Bruh, let's go all the way back. Because if we don't go to the beginning, j Max going to get mad. So you start off on the street. What happens? What's the family structure? And how does it culminate to you going to high school and becoming this incredible ball player and track star too? Right. Yeah. So so prior, you know, to to the, all, all the athletics, man, I was uh, on the streets. Me, my mom, my little sister, um, going from motel to motel. You know what I'm saying? And that's just when, you know, when we had the food snaps. Right. So once that this ran out. This is L.A., by the way. Right, this is L.A. Right. You know what I'm saying? So once that ran out, you know what I'm saying? I'm sleeping on park benches, sleeping in a car packed with everything we own, mm-hmm. me and my mom and my sister, man. And, uh, you know, that's just what the situation was for about two years. You know what I mean? So, you know, waking up early, trying to take, you know, little showers at the park and the bathroom and everything, man. So that was, yeah, that was the condition. Wow. At this point in your life, you kind of, like, can't see the future. Right, right. Right? And then you I guess you end up in foster care. How do you how do you get from there to going to school and becoming this incredible athlete? Yeah. Um because the odds are against you at this point. Right, right. right. Life of crime, right. it's not gonna turn out good for you, right. and you've turned it all around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I have to do what I have to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I wasn't afraid to go out there and, and, and make shit happen. Right. You know what I mean? To try to feed my, my family, you know, the best I could. So it came to a point where one of the last times as a juvenile I got arrested. Uh, ended up in juvenile hall for six months. Right. And then they gave me a choice. You just said you could go to camp or you could go to placement, which is a group home. Mm-hmm. So, you know, camp, you'll do your nine to 12 months, get out, and I'll be back in the same situation. So I opted to go to a group home, and that was probably one of the best decisions that I made. Why'd you opt for group home? Because, you Did know. Did somebody tell you that this is better for you, or you just thought in your mind that this is going right. to be a better situation? In my for mind, James. for me, it was going to be a better situation because I would have structure. Mm. I would have had three meals a day. All this is guaranteed. That's you know right. what I'm saying? You get your little your little monthly allowance of clothing and, and everything. You know, I would have had some type of normalcy mm-hmm. as a kid. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So for me, that was the best option at that point. Because, again, if I went to camp, I would have got out, same situation. Man, I'm about to go hit a lick. I got to go, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was definitely, yeah, that was the turning point. And so you, you so you get there. So how do you how do they figure out that you are this phenom when it comes to sports? Or is this something that you just you already al- always had ability? Because um, usually somebody right. figures out that this guy is really good at what he's good at. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, prior to that, I never played any organized sports. You know what I'm saying? Really? I, I ain't one of those guys who grew up doing pop Warner football and all that. Um, again, once I got to placement, got settled down, had some structure. I'm like you know what? I need an outlet. So I started playing football and and. That was, it just kind of took off from there. You know what I mean? Okay, you just don't know you can play ball, though. All of a sudden, your life is going, mm-hmm. you're, it's out of control. It's right. crazy. And you're like, you know, I think I'll play football now. Yeah. Listen, I had a whole lot of anger. There was a lot of anger inside of me. Mm-hmm. I got to release this somehow, or I'm going to release it on somebody else, all the rest of the kids in the house. So, um, and then again, it kept me away from the house. I didn't want to be in there. Right. We're in a group home with 16 other boys, man. Like, I want to be around y'all. So, you know, I'm like, let's play ball. That that keep me after school for a while. You know what I'm saying? Take some time away from the house. And, uh, man, it was just like, it was kind of meant to be. You know what I mean? That's a lot of thought process for a teenager to say, yeah. I don't want to get in trouble. I want to stay here with other hardheads because trouble will probably come out of that. Right. I'm going to find my own personal structure and structure my own life. Yeah. That's not the mindset of your average teenager saying, right. I'm seeking structure. Right. And you use that word a couple of times, structure. Yeah. What in your brain told you that I I need to seek out structure for me to get to where I want to get to? Because um, it doesn't seem normal to me. I don't remember if I was right. 16 saying, you know, I want structure in my life. Right, right. Well, I mean, I came from not having any. Right. So it was like, man, the, the being so inconsistent from day to day, 
not knowing where you go sleep today, what you go eat today. Yeah, you know I mean, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm tired of this. I need, I need. And you some... were searching for a structure. Yeah, and, wow. and me, I'm a very self motivated individual. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I didn't have no adult male figures to look up to. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A positive way growing up, like man, you need to go this route if you do this X Y Z happen. No, I had to make a decision for myself. Hmm. You know what I mean? And and that's just what happened. Wow. So you get good. Are, are, do they figure out that you're good along the way? Like, is there a coach or something? There, is there somebody there that motivates you to keep going? Or have this whole time you just continue to be your own self-motivator? Yeah. Um, now, I, of course, I didn't know how good I would be. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I was a running back. I can tell you right now, f- first game, first year playing, man, I fumbled like six times the first game. What? Yeah, you know I mean, okay. yeah. And you know what coach did? He kept feeding me the rock. Really? So that helped build my confidence. Mm. You know what I mean? So I didn't have a full grasp of what I should be doing, but naturally, you know what I'm saying, I just flow with, with, with And the coach didn't give yeah. up on you? No, nah, no. Nah. So that was one of the main reasons, man, that built my confidence. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. You fun with that many times, you, you going out the game. You got to get out. You you put us in jeopardy. Can't feed me the rock. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, he's not giving up on me. Why should I give up on myself? Hmm. You know? Yeah. So you go to, now. So you go through school. You're successful in a multitude of different sports: right. track, field. Pl- you play ball. You get you. You get the opportunity to go to school all the way across the map because yeah. it wasn't Virginia, right? West Virginia. So <laughs> West here's Virginia. a dude from LA. <laughs> you, it's amazing that you're so cavalier about mm. this. Your whole st- your story is really amazing. You you seek structure. You get the opportunity to go to school on the other side of the map right. and go like, oh yeah, this this totally makes sense to me. Right. How does this make sense? Because now you're like, <laughs> again, you're, you're at maybe 18 at this point. So right, you decide, right. I'm going to go to school all the way across the map. Is there, there has to be, Man. is there anyone there? Because I've not heard you say there was anyone really to influence you to make this, the decisions that you've made up to this point. Is there right. someone, someone there that says, hey, this would be a great idea for you to get the F out of here and go across the map and go to school yeah. to play ball? Um no, nah, not really. Like, just... man, I'm going to this country. <laughs> so you just Let said they a... give you the scholarship and say, hey, they said school is free, I'm going. Yeah, pretty much. Um, well, I will say this. It was, a, it was a couple of factors that played out. Number one, I was getting recruited by every school in the Pac-10. It was Pac-10 at the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people thought I was either going to go to UCLA or Washington. Mm-hmm. And uh, my SAT score said different. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? It so, can yeah, it can yeah, yeah, yeah. It can it can so, like, all right. Um... I got hit up by the school in West Virginia, uh, Concord University. Um, I went out there for the recruiting trip. So different change of pace being from L.A. Mm-hmm. It's, it's country, West Virginia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So i like, you know what? This this is cool. Slower pace. I get away from all the all the nonsense in, in L.A. You know what I mean? And uh, it, it, it was cool. It was, it was very different. Mm-hmm. But, you know what I'm saying? I was able to adjust to it. And, uh, you know, I walked away, you know what I'm saying, with a, with a scholarship, a degree. Yeah. A degree. yeah. And, uh, yeah. That. Now you have the opportunity to play some ball, right? But you opt to go to Poland, right? Warsaw, Poland, cold, mm. what? nothing there. Again, <laughs> there's, who's driving you at this point? Because y'all, there's, there's a right. God. <laughs> God told you to go to Poland. <laughs> so you, yeah. so God gets you here. Now He says, "Go to Poland, James. Go to Poland. You go to yeah. Poland. How was how was that experience playing ball in Poland? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> it, was, it, it was cool. It was different. Now I'm saying I got a chance to do what I love. So, I just, you know, it was, anytime you get to do what you love, it's, it's cool, right? Right, right. You know what right. I mean? But, yeah, that, that wasn't, that was short lasted. And... You didn't know. You knew you knew this wasn't going to be part of the, yeah, the long-term yeah. plan. Yeah, yeah. Right, correct. So how do you get back to these states and the Bears so, and all that? Right, so then I came back and I went to the uh, regional combine. That is uh, Orange Coast College down in California. And, um. I went there. I graded out like a 9.7. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of weeks later, my agent called me. And I got called in by the front office of Chicago Bears. So I went in. Now, here's the thing. One, one of the things that helped me be like, yeah, I want to do this no more. They wanted to move me to defense, which I was a running back. Mm-hmm. Granted, I was a big running back. Right. But they wanted to move me to like a, like a stand-up end, like a James Harrison type player. Mm-hmm. So and I was just like, you know what? My passion for the game ain't the same at this point. Um, I'm not playing defense. And I just wanted to do something different. So I chose they, to punch they, people they, in the face. They, they they offer you the opportunity to make some money doing this, though. You're like, I'm just not going to do that. I'd rather fight. Yeah. I say, like, 
When your passion. This don't even. This story is the wildest. You don't know, right on defense. I'm t- huh? Defense. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Maybe I should have done it. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> but yeah, my passion wasn't the same. First and foremost. Right. So it was like it's time to do something different. I w- I'm always seeking like to do something greater. Why? You know why fighting? Why? And, and then it, at first it wasn't boxing; it was MMA. Right. Correct. And now I used to do this for a little while. And yeah. let me tell you, this ain't easy. Right. And a lot of the fighting happens on the ground, not standing up. Right. So, Especially for heavyweights. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Where, yeah. So who talked you into this? I gotta know. There has to be somebody. <laughs> okay, God, we know J Mac. God, I get it. But there, is there anybody along the way that's directing any of these moves for you? And so far, we have n- right. only God, J right. Mac. Hey man, he 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 drives the boat. Even with the it, MMA, got you. Did but you see somebody fighting? Somebody this. talk you into it? In college, the person that inspired me to kind of do it was Kimbo. Kimbo Slice. Slice. Yeah, that, that was the whole era of YouTube popping, yeah, yeah. and Kimbo was out there knocking fools out. <laughs> and then my teammates called me I'm like, "Hey man, look look at this dude." I'm like, damn, all right, I'm like, I could do that. You know what I'm saying? But I was still playing ball at the time. Right. So when I was finally like, no, I'm done, I was like, yo, I'm about to start fighting. You know what I mean? So so Kimbo was actually probably the first person who got me looking then to to change what I was doing. Yeah. So out of a whim, mm-hmm. I don't want to play football no more. I guess I will fight. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you start MMA fighting. Did you know, have any background in this whatsoever? I had zero experience. I mean, of course, like street fighting, but that's totally different. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, because MMA is a whole different way of training. It's, right. it's totally different from boxing. People right. don't understand it. Yeah. You, got, you, you learn a totally different way. Right. Boxing can be incorporated, but MMA fighting is a totally different thing. Right, and you got to have everything. Everything. Right. It's going to be yeah. a little kickboxing in mm-hmm. there, boxing, and yeah. a lot of grappling. There's a lot of on-the-ground yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what you want to do at this point. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, you know, why not? You know, at the time it was it was hot. UFC was hot. Right. MMA yeah, was hot. Yeah. Um, so I like, you know what, let me go, let me go find me a gym. So I went and found a, a Kempo, a dojo. Mm-hmm. So that was my base, Kempo Karate, Muay Thai, kickboxing. I went, I did some amateurs, I won the California State Championship, and I went pro and it just, just kind of took off. You beat up a couple of people. Yeah, yeah. And I slept a, slept a few fuels, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was on. <laughs> yeah. This ain't amazing to y'all. This guy's just, whatever comes with life, I'm going to just go with it. So you beat up yeah. people for a while doing MMA. <laughs> right. Then some point, at some point you decide, you know what? How about I just straight up box? Mm-hmm. Did somebody say with your size as big as you are, this is what you should be doing? Yeah. And actually from... From MMA, I went to kickboxing. Yeah, that's right. You sure right, right. Yeah. right, right. So I was fighting with K1 and Glory all around the world. And then, but f- all in the back of my mind, I always wanted to box. <laughs> I would just prefer hands than rolling on the ground and trying right, to wrestle and grab. Right, but man, right. get up off me. Let's throw these hands. <laughs> so, but I used to tell my manager, like, yo, just set up a boxing match. But he never moved on it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some years went by. I'm still doing what I do. And finally, I was just like, you know what? This is a perfect time to get into boxing. You know what I mean, the heavyweight division ain't the same as it used to be. True. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a bunch of Frankensteins in the heavyweight division. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they all super tall now and just stiff and slow. Yeah. And, like, I just feel like I bring something totally different to the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, my style is, is like, from the old days. You know what I mean? And, and ain't nobody really bringing that mm-hmm. right now, in my, in my opinion. So... Big talk. Some couple of guys might see this and challenge you, so we'll see what happens. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> <laughs> now you said uh, Tyson had an opportunity. He's your mentee. How yeah, how'd y'all yeah. how'd you go about meeting him, and what what advice has he given you as you've become this heavyweight boxer? Yeah, well, it's crazy. Um, somebody showed him my film. Okay. Um, I went on to his podcast, just hanging. Oh out. yeah, I like yeah. that podcast. I've been uh, yeah listening yeah. to it. Uh huh. So went on there and he's chopping it up. He's watching my film and. Yo, like his reaction was crazy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like him watching me, like basically just 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 paying homage, giving me props. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And he don't do that with everybody. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it was really uh, it's really inspiring. You know? And uh, he just took it to me and just showing me a few things because our, our our style is pretty similar. You know what I mean? People always say, "Oh, I'm the next Mike Tyson." I'm I'm myself. You know what I'm saying? It just happened to be that we both are short heavyweights. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So our style is explosive. You know what I mean? So. But yeah, man, it was it was a dope experience. Was it really from a living legend? Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Were you, most people that always say something about Tyson still to this day they have a fear when they 
you know, meet Tyson because yeah. of his past. Was there any right. fear in you whatsoever or just that mutual respect as boxer to boxer? I definitely think it was a mutual respect. Of yeah. course, like, for me, it's like, man, it's Mike. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's our Mike. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, never, I, you know, I, mean, I, I don't fear nobody. You yeah, because saying? he's because you know Tyson's a different type of character. Yeah, and yeah, he still is. Right, a hey, it was type of super dude. cool, super funny, super yeah. intelligent. You yeah, know what I mean, very humble and down to earth. You know what I mean, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was a, it was a great experience. So, where does this bring James the Beast Wilson now? Are are you gonna switch up the game, <laughs> or are you gonna continue being the heavyweight boxer, <laughs> knocking people out? Because what your record was seven? I don't know. Yeah. Eight okay. Eight. All right. So you've knocked out a couple of, and there was seven of them was all knockout. Yeah. Yep. You like to knock people out. You like to put hands on people. <laughs> you know that's why J Matt has his distance over there. <laughs> 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 I'm he already, telling he already, you. He already, I'm he already, telling you. J Mac J Mac started, which I don't know, which I don't know. I think I got three. Why you trying to size me up? You know what I'm saying? Did you hold on? Hold on. It's over. Listen. Listen. Do you remember what he said? Uh, he said a lot of the guys that do it now that are yeah, heavyweights, J Mac. Uh, you want me to stand up? Oh God, here we go. Please don't knock him out. Man, hey, paramedics! <laughs> paramedics! Be ready. Hey, Lord, hey, and I'll be right up in here. Oh, 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 oh! oh, 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 oh hold on, hold on, hold on. Have a seat, J Mac. Good night, J Mac. We got insurance over here. J Mac dead, y'all. J Mac dead. Down goes Mac. You got to give him what he asked for, you know? No, no, no. He know better. He know better. He started, to, as soon as you walked in, he started saying, I'm just suing. I ain't fighting nobody. I ain't close to fighting this guy. Straight gone lawsuit. Oh, just just going to hit me. Yeah, I'm right. like, now, so so which, with the fighting now, is yeah. there a, a fight set up? Well, how, how long before people get to see you do um, your thing again? Man, that, that's, that's been one of the problems. Like, uh, really? It's hard getting fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it because you're a heavyweight? Man, there's heavyweights out there. Is it because they it's fear just... you? I mean, I, don't I mean, want... if 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 people are scared, you know, here's, this is the perfect platform. Say, there's a lot of people scared; they refuse to fight because of fear. If not, or it's just this is a hard game to really, you know, establish yourself in these days. Right. Well, it's it's a combination of both. Uh, and there, and there's been people who's who's taken the fight, signed a contract, and then pull out at the last minute. They uh -oh. get hurt or uh oh, whatever. uh oh. Like, you know what I'm saying? You you're not getting hurt the week of the fight. What are you doing? Uh -oh. So, you know what I'm saying? But I ask some questions, like, oh, all right, so that, that's been the problem, man. That's that's where we are right now. Really? Yeah, yeah. Is so, there anybody you want to fight in particular? I mean, anybody who got a belt, that's I, I want it. So we, they got to see me at the end of the day. You so. ready? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a process. I'm still, man, it's an everyday learning process. You know what I'm saying? You, you never had a point where you know everything. You know what I mean? So it's still stuff that I, I want to work on, I want to tighten up on. But at the end of the day, man, if they get somebody lined up, uh, I'm gonna get it in. I'm gonna train. I'm gonna be ready, and I know what I do. So, Beast, what would be the motivation if a guy already has a belt and he says Beast ain't even on my level? What would be his? What would be his inspiration to even want to fight you in the first place? Could that be what the problem is that they like? I'm not inspired by this guy. Why, I have nothing to prove to this guy. I got the belt. He wants it. Right. Right. Uh, why? Why should I? Even well, fight well, there's this guy? A, there's a lot to come into play too. You got you got the commission, and so some fights they won't even approve. Like say, how Deontay with Deontay Wilder after the UBC. We couldn't even line that up because there's a number of, of fights that I need to have before they even let us fight, regardless if I could beat him right now or not. So they wouldn't even allow that to happen. You know what I'm saying? So can you get on the road where you do those fights so you can be able to? And that's the problem, like getting these these fights Damn. in the meantime to, to get there, which is slowing things down because guys not taking the fight. You know what I'm saying? So, so if they don't take the fight, you that's can't go to, you can't go Right, to... correct, correct. Damn, so what are you going to do? Man, I'm about to start stripping, bro. Do it. Do it. Do it. And she's awake. He's always doing another, you know, transitioning after this. That might be your next big thing. Never rule it out. Never rule it out. But I got right. So you do all the physical stuff, you know. You got all that down. So what about, like, your mental strength? What do you do? Like, are you, do you do yoga or you meditate or anything like that? I mean, I think I think that's the strongest part of, part about me, especially with finding that. First and foremost, you gotta be mentally strong. You know what I'm saying? Be in tune with yourself. You know that that gotta be your, your foundation. You know what I'm saying? What's going on upstairs? So, yeah, I meditate. I get you know what I'm saying. I talk to God. I find my peace, and then I sleep, fools. Yeah. 
What's your usual ritual when you do a, when you have a fight? Is there a ritual that you go through? These these are the things I do up until it's time for me to fight. Here's what I do the day of. Here's what I do hours before it's time for me to fight. Is there a ritual that you follow? You or I've been right. working out. I've been doing everything I need to do. I've been training properly. I'm ready for the fight that day. Right. Uh, I mean, just train, 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 and uh, usually, a man be, before I get on the road or. If the fight is in LA, I always go to the cemetery visit my older brother who was murdered. Oh wow! Um, so that's always a part of my pre-fight ritual. Go see my bro, you know what I mean? And uh, I just day of the fight, I just relax. I don't like to be bothered by nobody. I just kind of isolate myself, get in my zone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just just visualize. How do you occupy yourself in the meantime? Like you said, there's there's a lot of guys they they're not gonna fight you. Uh, you, but you still have to maintain yourself and your lifestyle. And I know you've transitioned with a lot of different things that you do. Right. But how do you hold yourself down in the meantime until somebody says, okay, I'll fight you. I ain't scared. Yeah. Um, well, I, I type in a few different things, man. I do a little acting and whatnot. Okay. So I got a few commercials, nationals and stuff running. Um, I do a lot of stuff with kids. Um, that's probably what I'll be doing when I'm retired from, from fighting, you know, especially inner city uh, foster and probation youth. So... I do a lot of speaking engagements uh, with L.A. County probation and whatnot, okay. so, yeah. So you still live in L.A. then? Yes. It's, it's still home for you? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm curious to know what happened to your mom, because uh, you were telling us that you were out in the streets. Right. Did she, she ever, I assume that she got off the streets, and where was your dad? I'm just curious. Um, my dad I never met. Okay. So he was never he was never in the picture. Um, my mom do you was, know who he is? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for asking. Uh, no, no, it's all good. No. Really? I've never, it, from from what I know, um, you know what I'm saying, he was a heavy drinker right. and drink and get abusive. So at the time of me being born, that was when they split, so I've never seen him. Wow. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah. You so. are aware of who he is, though? I mean, I know his name. But that's it? Never yeah, seen I, never, him I don't know how he look. If I if I passed him on the street, I wouldn't know. Wow. Did yeah. you ever have any desire to? Uh, Slight curiosity, but, but, but not so at, much. At but, this point. Yeah, it was like so much time has passed, like at this point, what? What, what, what you gonna do? Mm. Who, who are you? Yeah, yeah, you know I mean, yeah. which is which is very weird for me being being a dad now. Like, man, I could I could never not be in my kids' life. And you I know? think that's what happens too to people who have a parent or a father figure that wasn't there. You're like, I can't see how in the world you could bring somebody into the world right. and not want to be a participant in their life. Right. But it teaches, but it makes you a better human being. Yeah. So that's that's that one bad thing. That bad thing makes it a beautiful thing on the other end that you're going to mo most certainly, no right. matter what happens, going to be a participant in your child's life. Yeah, and absolutely. I guess, Mac, your other, to your other point, and your mother, your, your mom, what how is she? to yeah. your mom? Yeah. She I mean, got off the streets eventually, I guess, and your mom... Well, she, she was. She still was. Even, like, after well, I got put in a uh, group home, uh -huh. she still was, her and my little sister. Were you the oldest? No, I'm second to youngest. Wow. So, yeah. So they was they was still in that situation. Um, I was now in a group home, and uh, that lasted for them years after that as well. Wow. You know what I mean? So, yeah, then eventually my little sister went back east, D.C., lived with my older sister. They're like 10 years older than us, so they're already grown at that point. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it was just like it, it was a continuing cycle. You know what I mean? Did she make it out, your mother? Do y'all have a relationship to this day? Um, Our relationship... Uh, no, nah, not 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 really. And I don't know. Maybe I'm subconsciously feel some type of way. Why? You know what I mean? Why? Because um, she was a young lady who probably couldn't give you the life that you maybe wanted to mistakes. have. So why do you feel that way? Man, I I get that. And I, I've seen both sides. I've seen her. You know what I'm saying? Busting her butt and making things happen. Also seeing her like, yo, why are we in this situation? See again, as because a, maybe her, right. her her mom was in this situation. Well, and that's the yeah. reason that it's a cycle, I right. assume. Right. Right. And I guess you know it's up to the next generation to try to break that cycle. Right. I'm assuming. I right. don't know. I'm just... Well, no, I've heard. I was. Just, I don't. I don't know what. It's a lot of things from her childhood. Just certain things that transpired mm -hmm. where that that kind of made her that way. But me as a parent now, I don't care what's going on. Right. Mm. My my kids gonna be straight. Right. You know what I mean. That, that that's but, that's how I see it. But if your mom can't do it, how can you? I mean, you still gotta forgive her. I hope you can forgive, you forgive her, but you yeah. still have a chip on your shoulder. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, because you know, if if she doesn't have the education or if she right. doesn't have the know how, I mean, I don't know how young she was. Mm -hmm. Then 
you can only blame her so much because mm-hmm. she was like, you didn't know. You didn't know no better, you right. know. And, you know, and I guess you can only teach your children how to be better than your parents were and stuff like that because right. it's amazing to see that you actually made it yeah, in your story. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Right, right, <laughs> so right. I was just curious about, you know, what happens to the mother and how your other brothers and sisters, yeah. did any of them become as good as you seem to be? Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. They, I mean, they all straight now. Everybody's okay. good, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we, lo- we lost my brother along the way. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, f- for the most part, everybody, you know, what I'm saying, er- everybody else, they-, they made it out. You know, what I'm saying, we self-driven, self-motivated. You know what I mean, and uh, I don't know. She, she got her own stuff that she's dealing with, and you know, I really hope uh, God help her get it through it because she's still dealing with it to this day. You know, what I'm saying, right. even even dealing, still dealing with the death of my brother. Right. You know what I mean, so it's a lot of stuff that that she's holding on to that hurts her and and make her. You know what I'm saying? Move a certain way. So that's something she got to figure out. And she's that person who don't talk about her feelings. You know really? I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that could be I, deep. I, that's another thing. You know what I mean? So you holding on to a lot of stuff from your, all the way from your childhood. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's that makes you move a certain way. You know what I mean? So when you, you believe that people that. should have therapy? I, I mean, to, to each his own. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I'm. I i do not talk about my feelings either. I'm the type of person. Me too. Me too. <laughs> so that's yeah, why, yeah. I, that's yeah. why I was wondering because I feel the same way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, what can you do to me? I mean, for me. I mean, I could tell you. Some people want right. to talk it out. Some I people, mean, I like who yeah. happens to be a brother that don't need to talk it out. He got God, and they move. He moves a certain way. No, but maybe he want to. Maybe he want to well, talk he it right out. Here, but we, he feel like right. somebody is not going to listen. What can you yeah. do? I can talk it out. He can talk to me all day, and I can just listen to him. That's right. all I can do. And maybe, but what can you do? Right. What can you do? Right. That's so, what I'm saying. So you wouldn't. So you wouldn't do it yourself because you're like, I'm talking to you, but there's nothing you can do to help my situation. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, you're not I, against not, it, though. I'm not against it. Right. Let me like to make that nothing's people people gain peace in just releasing, yeah, and just talking, and not and, and and you know you probably can't do nothing but just to get it off. Right. You know what I mean, so yeah, that that does help. So, but again, you know, to, to each his own. You know what I mean. Let's take it back to the boxing, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to get you. We, we you, wanted, you wanted to get all deep, yeah. <laughs> no, and dig deep into the psychology oh, always, of the beast. That was you. you. Know what? It's always a part of the story. Then you want to change it up and act like it rebranded. Because, because, <laughs> no. Because, all right, y'all. Let's go back to the boxing. Because, <laughs> because you got to know the backstory mm. to know why he became the beast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's the reason he's a beast. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And if you get in the ring with him, you'll find out even more so. When so put now hands it on. seems even more dangerous to me to jump in the ring with him. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing the psychology of why he is a beast. You stupid. <laughs> oh, Ladies and yeah, gentlemen, yeah. it is James the Beast Wilson on the show. Good luck to yeah, you, brother. Yeah, appreciate it. Now, I know everybody's on social media. Let me, before you get out of here, because we want to see what you're doing when you're going to fight again. We want to keep up with you. So tell everybody what your social media is that so we can follow you on IG, Twitter, all that. Like yeah, that. you can keep up with me on all platforms at James the Beast Wilson, man. Hopefully there'll be something lined up soon. So stay tuned, man, because it's going down, baby. It's beast mode or was no mode. Mm.